name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. That is a prayerful assembly. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, uh, today is a great day in the life of the church because it is Pentecost Sunday, the day that the church celebrates its birth. The day that we remember not only the conclusion of the great 50 days of Easter, but the life, the vitality that comes to us through God's Holy Spirit. As we rejoice in God's blessings of the past and God's blessings of the present, we come together as people of faith and we first acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to the life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. church and every people and nation pour out we pray the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. 
And suddenly, there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, staying in Jerusalem. As this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons. And we are all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of, the first, of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For the great celebration of Pentecost, the vestments are red. In fact, this particular red vestment, a great symbol of the Holy Spirit, of the, the gifts that come from the Holy Spirit, the fire of the Holy Spirit. But there is another solemn occasion when the vestments are also red, and that's on Good Friday, the only day all year that we do not celebrate Mass, we do not celebrate Eucharist. And on that celebration of Good Friday, the priest processing up the aisle comes before the sanctuary and simply in silence lies flat on the floor, prostrate before the crucifix, completely submissive to God's will, completely beholden to Jesus Christ who suffered and died for us. There's another time that the priest lies prostrate on the floor as well, and that is at the ordination ceremony. And so it is that for myself and for two of my classmates here today, among 22 ordained together in 1992, in Sacred Heart Cathedral in Newark, in the sanctuary of that great cathedral, we too lay prostrate on the floor, a symbol, a sign of our complete submission to God and of our dependence on God and the prayers of the people. In fact, it's during that time, during that part of the ordination liturgy ritual, that the entire assembly, all the faithful gathered, are praying to God in sacred chant seeking the intercession of the saints throughout that whole period as we to be ordained are prostrate on the floor. Having studied and practiced for the ordination ritual, I have to tell you that that part of the Mass touched me unexpectedly because of course you don't practice everybody praying and chanting and singing the intercession of saints. And I suppose if we were going to study scientific understanding of it, there would be maybe sound waves from people singing and chanting and praying. But I have to tell you that laying prostrate in the cathedral during the intercession of saints chant, to me, physically felt like prayer washing over us as we were about to be ordained. And that comes back to mind for me as we hear about the first Pentecost. How, how can we put into words the Spirit? They, they say it was, it was like a wind filled the room. It was like fire on the people there. Because words fail us at times in faith. Thankfully, we have the Holy Spirit who prays from within us when words fail. And the Holy Spirit to inspire the sacred scriptures 
to help us try to find words to describe what is sometimes really indescribable. Those, those connections, the wind and the fire, and the chanting of seeking intercession of saints, great signs of the unity of God with God's people. St. Paul, as we heard, he would describe what it was like to have gifts of the Holy Spirit shared, showered on the people of God. As I mark this week, 25 years as a priest, I can honestly say there have been so many times when I have witnessed the power and the gifts of the Holy Spirit alive and active in the church, and particularly among so many of you gathered here today. What a blessing that is when we are privileged to witness God's action, when we are aware of the gifts of God that come to us. I can also say, in, in a mysterious kind of way, that I think I've been aware of the Holy Spirit in my own life too. And just as it's almost hard to describe other than, than a, a wind filling the room or fire coming down, for me, it's like an inner, unexplainable, quiet urging. It, it's like that time, maybe I'm in a rectory and something says, you should just go over to the hospital and see if there's any parishioners this week. And running into somebody, not a parishioner, in the hallway who asked, would I go and pray with their dying mother in their room? It wasn't on my agenda, but something inside me said, you should go there now. Sometimes the promptings of the spirit are quite serious. When you find yourself in a hospital room with a broken-hearted family. Other times, maybe it's a little more amusing. In one of my parishes, we decided to take our youth group whitewater rafting. <laughs> Actually, in both of my other parishes, and I haven't done it here. <laughs> but in one of those trips, I'll remember standing in line, bathing suit, t-shirt, uh, wearing our, our uh, safety, our life, life preserver jackets, waiting to board the bus to take us to the drop-off point. And one of the youth group kids taps me on the shoulder. He goes, Father, would you hear my confession? <laughs> and uh, so I thought, OK, this, this is one I remember. Not the confession itself, but, but the situation. And you know, so the Holy Spirit prompts someone to seek forgiveness, someone to offer forgiveness. As we heard in that gospel, a great gift of, of God to the church. And so we stepped away from the line, and I was kind of afraid that everybody would think I was pulling him out of line like he was in trouble or something, you know. Um, but really, the Holy Spirit prompts us to be aware of opportunities to love and serve in all kinds of varied ways. Part of my prayer for us, for you and me at, at this Pentecost Mass, is that now at every Pentecost, but that we would continue to pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the whole church, on the whole church. But there's a little trick with that because our tendency at times is, oh God, bless the church, you know? All that church out there. Let them be filled with your Holy Spirit to do your work. But really, really that prayer has to include ourselves. We have to honestly open ourselves when we offer those prayers. God, if it's your will, also let me be vigilant, ready to receive the gifts, but especially vigilant, ready to share them whenever you might prompt me. Of course, one of the paradoxes of faith for us is that we love and serve God and the church, not only through the outpouring of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, an abundance of all that goodness, but the paradox is that we also serve through the cross and through suffering. When we walk into church and we, we see the crucifix, we're reminded not only of our Lord's suffering, but that as disciples we are called and will have sharings in that cross, sharings in that suffering. And that those are not meant to be detriments, 
but rather channels and opportunities for God to do in and through and among us what we don't think possible. St. Paul understood that well, right? You know how St. Paul wrote, No, I was given a thorn in the flesh, and I prayed and I begged God to remove that thorn, but he didn't. And so St. Paul realizes that in humility, it reminds him of his dependence on God. My friends, all of us, we all have thorns in the flesh of one sort or another. Sometimes they're, they're visible to others, and sometimes they're thorns on the inside. And like St. Paul, at times we may pray to God, could you remove that, please? And sometimes God does, and sometimes God maybe just lets that thorn be a reminder of our dependence on God, of our awareness of sharing in the Lord's sufferings. Because the good news is that we're not judged by those thorns but we share in the Lord's ministry through them. When we share in the Lord's ministry, those thorns remind us of the great gift that we hear Jesus speak of, the gift of his peace. Peace that the world cannot give, but peace that comes from Christ. Have you experienced that? Have you ever sensed or felt the peace that only Christ brings to us. I know I have. Maybe it's at Mass, but gosh, even just a few moments ago, when we're lifting our voices in prayer, and all our voices are connected in praying or singing, you know, sometimes I get a sense then of the great peace of Jesus Christ. In the sacrifice of the Mass, offering and receiving Eucharist, Sometimes, you know, I just want to, like, stop and freeze the moment. But, of course, you can't because we're continuing with the prayers. But don't we sometimes find a special peace in that kind of moment? Peace and reconciliation. The sacrament of confession. Jesus says, go and forgive. Who sins you forgive are forgiven. And I know I speak to my brother priest when I say how often we have experienced deep peace in offering absolution in that great sacrament. And I'm also sure I speak for them when I say we have experienced deep peace when, like yourselves, we go to seek and receive that absolution ourselves. Where else do we find that peace? Well, for me, it's also very much in the joy of family life. So much of my family gathered here today. From the reminiscing of old times to the sharing of new joy. Don't we find peace in those special moments of good friendship that we find with one another? And sometimes in the bounty of God's creation. I know I found peace in quiet prayer on the, on the edge of the beach or or the top of a mountain. Great ways, and I'm sure you prayerfully reflect on it, treasure those, because it's the Holy Spirit within that helps us hold on to those memories, to treasure them and, and perhaps even to share them. Finally, too, I think, I think we can find great peace in the sacred scriptures, can't we? Has the Holy Spirit helped open the Word of God to you at different times in your life? Maybe just praying with the Bible on your own, you find a moment of peace. Maybe hearing a proclamation of Scripture, and you find a special moment of the peace of Christ. I share with you just a couple of my own, hoping that they'll prompt you as well. In college, when I was studying journalism and, and beginning to discern what does God want, want to maybe call me to in life, a passage from St. Paul, Whatever you do in word and in work, do it with love for the Lord. And that gave me peace. Later entering the seminary, the very first week in praying in the chapel with the seminarians, beautiful phrase, rejoice in hope, be patient under trial, persevere in prayer. Those who've gone through seminary, I think we needed all three of those, right? But we all do, we all do need those. 
But those words so frequently gave me great peace. Another passage gave me great peace at the beginning of my priesthood. It comes from the prophet Jeremiah. Young Jeremiah called by God. And he's not too sure about that call. He's like, God, don't, don't send me and don't ask me to speak. I don't know what to say. And God says, ah, don't tell me you're too young. I'll give you what to say. Well, at 54, I, I guess I really can't find peace in the don't tell me you're too young part. <laughs> but I still rely on the Holy Spirit helping prompt me in what to say. And then finally, a brief passage I just wanted to share with you, which really is one that has guided me throughout seminary and priesthood time. As we come today to the end of the Easter season, this comes from a resurrection appearance when Jesus is with Peter, who's denied him three times, remember. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him, the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. I think for myself, I imagine for all of us, Jesus keeps asking us to love him and serve him. For me, in 25 years of priesthood, I believe that he asked me to do that through feeding the flock. And I hope that if I get another 25 years, that that will continue to define that as well. I pray too for each and every one of us right now that the Holy Spirit, whose sending we rejoice in, whose sending we celebrate, will stir up again within us the gifts we have received for our salvation, for our faith, for our peace, but also to rejuvenate our parishes, our diocese, the church throughout the whole world. filled with the Spirit, let us rise to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us then, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, he became man. For our sake, he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and my life in the world to come. Amen. As we listen to the Spirit crying out within us, we present our petitions to God. Our Pentecost response is, Come Holy Spirit. For our church led by Pope Francis, as we seek to be truly a poor church for the poor, we pray, Come Holy Spirit. For all entrusted with the Word of God, for preachers, presbyters, pastors, and parents, we pray, Come Holy Spirit. For the peace of the Holy Spirit, that it may dwell in the hearts of all people in every nation, we pray, Come Holy Spirit. For firefighters, postal workers, garbage collectors, and for all who work to keep this complex world going, we pray, Come Holy Spirit. For print and broadcast journalists, and for all who provide truthful information in the media, we pray, Come, Holy Spirit. For those who are beginning summer vacations, may they find a time of rest, refreshment, and a new vitality, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. For Michael James Carey, who was baptized in our parish this weekend, may he find a welcome home in the church and a lead a holy life inspired by his parents and godparents, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. That all who have gone before us rest in the peace of Christ, especially Sister Elizabeth Ann Galvin, James Simpson, and Valerie Pryor, whom we remember in a special way at this Eucharist, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. In a special way, too, let us pray for all those suffering in London, for those who grieve and mourn, for those who live in fear, and for peace amongst nations and peoples, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. For the prayers we hold in our hearts, and for those on our parish prayer list and in our book of intentions, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. My friends, as I celebrate 25 years, we also rejoice as a class of permanent deacons celebrates their very first anniversary. And among those is our own Deacon Ray of our own parish and Deacon Tom of the neighboring parish of St. Paul. Oh God, you call the deacons of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brothers and sisters. Grant, we pray, that they may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God, and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your Son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, 
For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop. The order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father,
pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ Jesus Christ who said to your apostles peace I leave you my peace I give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever Amen. the peace of the Lord be with you always let us offer each other Sign of peace. Peace Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. The body of Christ. After he receives the cup, okay. I'll minister to you, and then you bring it to the priest. Okay. okay. The blood of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. Two of you go to 
through the servers and then the back of church, okay? okay. The blood of Christ. So just take it, and you're going to stand on the side of the The body of Christ. Thank you. 
Let us pray. May these gifts we have consumed benefit us, O Lord, that we may always be aflame with the same Spirit whom you wondrously poured out on your apostles through Christ our Lord. Amen. May I ask you to be seated for just a couple of moments. first thing I, that uh, I just thought I might do isn't on my reminder list, but it occurred to me during communion, so I need your cooperation for this part. <clears throat> With those of you whose marriages I witnessed, please stand. God's blessings and rejoicing, looking back on all the goodness. Now, if you'd be seated, and we may need your help for this part. Will those I baptized either stand or be held up by somebody else? <laughs> Very good. Thanks. Again, great joy in sharing those memories of faith. Uh, there's a, a poorly, that's not grammatical at all, uh, saying that uh, priests don't come from nowhere. Um, so uh, with that in mind, uh, I especially wanted to uh, give thanks to and acknowledge uh, in a very particular way my parents. My parents are the ones who brought up the gifts of bread and wine. Uh, you know, my parents are obviously the ones who helped bring me into the world, who guided me and, and our whole family in growing, um, whose love nurtures, nurtures our family generation after generation, and who later this summer, uh, 25 is nice, later this summer they celebrate their 56th wedding anniversary. Ms. Mom, Dad, please rise. Being the oldest of eight, um, which is sometimes like being a third parent, uh, <laughs> uh, obviously, uh, you know, I would have a, a, some influence, of course, on uh, my siblings, but they also have a deep influence on me, um, and so I'd ask if my siblings would also please watch. Of, uh, I guess of interesting note, uh, they're all interesting, but I mean a couple of particular things. Uh, my brother Jeffrey served as cross bearer. Uh, I didn't ask the family to take on a lot of responsibility today, but uh, 25 years ago, he was an 11 year old altar server who carried the cross at my first mass, so I thought that would be nice to have him do that as well today. Um, and uh, while I baptized uh, all 10 of my nieces and nephews, uh, one of them was baptized here, it was Daniel, so uh, that's a very special thing to bring you back to the church where you're baptized. As I uh, grow in, in faith um, and rejoice with you all today, um, in particular, I'm grateful for all those who've joined us from the home parish where I grew up of St. Luke's, uh, for the parish where I served as a seminarian and as first served as a priest, which is Church of the Annunciation in Paramus, and uh, my second parish assignment, which is Little Flower in Berkeley Heights. And I'm so, uh, so glad to have so many of you who have joined me from those different parish communities and I thank you, too, for the ways which you helped me grow in faith and priesthood uh, during my service among you. In a very special way, uh, you have to realize from whatever parish you're from, it's challenging to get a priest not in his own parish on Sunday morning. Um, and so I'm very grateful uh, for the priests who have come to kind of celebrate <clears throat> at this Mass. Uh, in, in particular, a couple of them were here at the altar. Uh, they were, that's because they were my classmates. Uh, so uh, Father Joe Scarangella, Father Mike Saparito uh, were classmates of mine who were able to be here with me today at the sacrifice of their own parish. Um, Monsieur Seymour is one of the, the predecessors of mine as pastor here at Guardian Angel, and I'm very glad he was able to be here. Uh, Father Don, of course, who is, uh, is among our parish here and, and serves so faithfully and joyfully with us. Uh, good friends uh, among the priests uh, and neighboring parishes were here. Um, and finally, in a very particular way, uh, I think it was 1974, a brand newly ordained priest got assigned to St. Luke's No Hocus. Uh, that was Father Bob Slipe, so I guess I'd like to remind him I was 11 years old then. <laughs> uh, he was, uh, 
He was good enough to stay at St. Luke's Parish all through my high school years, uh, helping lead a fantastic uh, youth ministry at a time when that was beginning to really uh, take off and explode. Um, and then very conveniently, when I graduated high school, uh, that's when he went to his new assignment, which ended up being pretty good because he ended up becoming the vocation director. Uh, so that kind of helped me in discerning priesthood. Uh, Bob, I just would like if you please stand for a moment. Thank you. Bob also had the, uh, the, the special uh, assignment of preaching at my first Mass 25 years ago, so I didn't think I'd put you on the spot again today. So. <laughs> and uh, speaking of preaching, uh, it occurs to me too that uh, Father Bob Stagg, who's our neighbor at presentation, uh, was one of my preaching professors in the seminary, so I'm grateful for him for that. And also among us, we have Sister Enora Werner, who is directing my uh, doctoral uh, preaching program. Uh, so uh, Bob and Enora, if you would please stand. Thank you. when I speak of the parishes where I served, I'm not leaving out uh, the one that's had the majority of my service almost 14 years here at Garden Angel. I'm great, grateful for all the parishes who are here, and I have to say in a very particular way for our pastoral staff. Um, you know, Father Don uh, always uh, says whenever we get together, he's like, you don't know how lucky you are to have such a great staff. And I always answer him, I do know how lucky I am, <laughs> but it's good to be reminded. So with our parish staff, please rise. Thank you. An interesting perspective with the staff, we come with a lot of different kinds of experience and backgrounds, uh, but as I celebrate my 25th, uh, I was saying to a couple of them, it sort of struck me that two of the staff mer members, uh, our music director and our youth minister, weren't even born when I was ordained, you know. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so we are a multi-generational uh, serving staff. I'd like to thank in a particular way all those who um, helped prepare uh, the, the, the liturgy and the reception. As Mass ends in a couple of moments, I hope you'll uh, all join us next door um, that way in the uh, parish auditorium uh, where there'll be some light refreshments and a chance to visit with each other and you could ask, I don't know, how do you know him? I don't know, how do you know him? Yeah. Um, uh, I'm grateful uh, for all of you, for all my friends over the years uh, who've been with, he, with me, uh, my extended family through marriage, uh, my brother's marriage into the Uber family. Thank you all for being here. Um, and again, all those who helped prepare the liturgy, and in a very particular way to uh, those who helped us with music ministry today. Thank you. Please rise. So uh, I, I realize I, because it's a parish mass, I should of course tell you the parish announcements too. So parish announcement, we have our lecture all set, very good. You can skip the one about it being my anniversary though, okay. <laughs> You don't have to be a parishioner to buy a 50-50 ticket. <laughs> and uh, if you don't want to write out your whole name and number, just write Father Charlie on the ticket. That's fine. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Yes. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.
you hand out the prayer cards to everybody? Sure, sure. Do it. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Alrighty. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks.